What's up guys? Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. There's a whole bunch of different materials that roof deck substrates are made from, whether it be plywood, OSB, B deck, different types of metal decking. We're gonna talk about the different characteristics that those offer and what you should know as a metal roof installer or someone that's designing a metal roof. Today, I've got Jason from the Sheffield Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jason. No, thanks for having me. Tell me, what are the typical roof decks that we see out in the marketplace today? What are they typically made out of? So primarily, uh, roof decks are gonna be your, your plywood or your metal deck. And then you can get into the, the little additional caveats of metal deck with insulation, ISO above that, or you could have uh, OSB and little plywood. Uh, and then the, the last one would be um, open framing. So let's focus on the solid decking side and let's start with the plywood versus OSB kind of discussion. You know, we see plywood and OSB both used very often. So what are the differences there? There are, there's, there's not a whole lot of difference. You lose some structural performance in OSB. When you're doing a weather type warranty or an engineered system through Sheffield, we're going to want half inch plywood, uh, 15, 30 seconds minimum. But when you get into OSB, we're going to want five eighths inch or thicker. So pullout values are, are pretty much in line. Plywood OSB, you just want a little bit thicker OSB. So 7 16 OSB, that's a no-go for... That, that is a no-go. 7 16 is not considered structural. It shouldn't be on a, should never be on a roof. That's typically on walls. So what about on the metal decking side? Let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit about B-deck and, and what that means for a roofing system. Yes. Uh, so B deck, it's a corrugated metal decking. It's a structural decking, typically on commercial projects. And so it's 22 gauge or thicker. You have to use a different type of fastener in, in lieu of a sharp point like you would into plywood. Uh, now you have to use a self driller, something that's going to bite through that metal. And we know about how to install over a plywood deck, you know, what else uh, is required when it comes to in, uh, installing over a metal deck in addition to the fastener differences? The one caveat is perimeter edges of your roof. You're dealing with a corrugated uh, sub substrate. So with your fastener spacing, say along your rake edge, all, all edges, valleys, sidewalls, ridge eaves, you need to make sure you have solid attachment for your fasteners. Um, and primarily up your rakes or sidewalls, you when you're doing a four inch or a six inch fastener spacing, you need to make sure uh, you're not missing the deck because of the flues. Typically, uh, for our standard details, we show on metal decking a 22 gauge continuous support, which is basically a support angle. It's an additional flashing that is installed around all edges of a roof facet. So that includes valleys, sidewalls, and this uh, and the same applies when you're doing insulation over B deck, you're going to add that continuous support around all your perimeter for fastener attachment. So does that um, so structural plate go down before the insulation? No, it can, it can go over the insulation. So what other requirements does B deck with ISO um, need when it comes to, you know, installing the roof? So the biggest thing with that is, of course, now you're getting into a thicker system for your fastener attachment. So with that, you're gonna need thicker fasteners. Uh, typically, now you're getting into number 12s. You know, number 10s are, is basically the, the starting point of our fasteners for, for plywood. Metal deck, you might be up into a number 12. Metal deck with ISO, now you're getting into number 14s. And that is like the length of the fastener, is that right? It's actually, it's actually the thickness of the fastener. Um, so it's a beefier, it's a beefier fastener. Because the fasteners are getting longer, they also have to get thicker. Yeah, that's good to know. So when it comes to installing over that ISO, you have a longer fastener and a thicker fastener. Absolutely, yes. Let's talk about open framing a little bit. Tell me about the characteristics of installing over open purlins. Yeah, open framing. So that's um, that gets really challenging. So now we're dealing with panels where other where over solid decking, you just have to do UL580 testing for wind uplift to meet UL90. Now we're getting into open framing that you need a panel that can perform structurally because the panel is technically the deck. 
So now we're getting into ASTME 1592 testing. So you need to make sure you're putting the panel on that has been tested uh, for structural performance. And so with open framing, now we're getting into stretching from minimal clip attachment to two foot. Now we're getting up into four foot clip attachments every four foot. So once again, you need to have a continuous support around all the perimeter of your roof. And that's typically 18 gauge now to span your four foot Berlin spacings, uh, so that all your perimeter flashings, eaves, rakes, valleys, sidewall, headwall, ridge, uh, all has a continuous component to attach to. The caveat to this is this is around penetrations as well. So when you have curbs or pipes in the center of the roof, you really need to account for an 18 gauge structural component under your panel system to get around those penetrations. So what panels are available through Sheffield that you can use on open framing? So on an open frame system, you're going to want to use uh, a two-inch mechanical. Uh, We have testing, uh, ASTM 1592 testing on the two-inch mechanical in steel. Uh, So currently not in aluminum. The two-inch mechanical, that rib height with the double lock has the best structural performance. The two-inch mechanical has the most testing that we have uh, out of any of our panels. Uh, You get the 2140, which is the submersion test. Um, and so that is typically on an open frame system because needed on an open frame system because they're typically low slope. You don't see many open frames uh, systems over a 412. So testing is a, is a good point that you bring up. How does deck substrate affect engineering? Once again, that refers back to uh, fastener pullouts. Uh, the, the type of material you're attaching your clips to with the fastener uh, determines what type of fastener needs to be used to meet the engineering. So whatever someone is installing over has to be exactly what was installed over in the engineering test. Uh, if you if you want to meet our engineering requirements, there's plenty of roofs that get installed that, that don't have engineering. They're just kind of doing three-foot clip spacings, and that... You know, on residential, that may be fine. I've seen plenty of risk perform like that, but that doesn't mean it's meeting our engineering requirements. So engineering on different substrates requires different fasteners and different clip spacings. Uh, so that's where we're getting back into whether you can use a number 10 fastener versus a 12 versus a, you know, a 14. We also run into systems that haven't been engineered yet that, you know, it's almost, it's virtually impossible to have engineering on every deck assembly that's out there because they're they are constantly changing so say we're seeing insulation over plywood and so we don't have engineering on that um doesn't mean you can't do job specific engineering and they take the pull out values of the fasteners they they compare it to maybe our plywood deck maybe our b deck with iso and you can get an engineer uh to stamp that and say that this is your system and then they will determine the fast the clip spacing for that project you know for like a weather tight warranty project how does deck assembly impact your panel choice to receive a weather tight warranty through sheffield then uh the deck assembly should match our engineering it needs to have job specific engineering where an engineer is taking taking our testing performance our our results and applying it to the conditions of that job specifically. And then they will stamp it and provide the clip spacing. When I'm going to install a metal roof, either on a new build or a re-roof, you know, what should I be looking at when it comes to the deck? How should I be inspecting it? Anything I should be looking out for? That's the biggest thing. Before you starting any project, you should inspect the deck because uh, the metal roof is not going to hide any uh, deflections or deviations of the deck itself. And that's even with open framing systems as well. I typically recommend str- uh, taking a string line and stringing a line both directions from ridge to eave, eave to ridge, and from rake to rake, side to side, so vertically and horizontal, and see what type of, is there any dips? Is there any deflection in the deck? Uh, because that will show through, especially in commercial projects uh, once you dry it in, you've, you're typically you are accepting the substrate, and so then it becomes your responsibility to correct. And even in residential, you should you should check it out and 
and make any modifications that need to be done prior to installing the roof. All right, Jason, well, thanks a lot. I learned a lot about deck substrates and how they affect Sheffield's engineering and your metal roof installation. If you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.